Welcome back. So let's dig into these propositions, uh, starting on page 259. So again, Sarah Spethi kind of summarizes for us, you know, the, the principles of effectuation, affordable loss rather than expected returns, strategic alliances rather than competitive analyses, exploitation of contingencies rather than pre-existing knowledge, and control of an unpredictable future rather than the prediction of an uncertain. So she gives proposition one. She says, pre-firms, and, and the level of analysis that she's using here is at the level of the economy. She says, pre-firms or very early stage firms created through process of effectuation, if they fail, will fail early and at lower levels of investment than those created through processes of causation. Ergo, effectuation processes allow the economy to experiment with more numbers of new ideas at lower costs. In other words, effectuation firms may fail a lot, but they keep failing over and over and over, and eventually they're going to hit something big. And that's how, how the whole venture capital model works, right? Fail early before it gets too out of hand, and then you try something new. At the level of the market industry, market or industry, she says, Proposition 2, successful early entrants in a new industry are more likely to have used effectuation processes than causation processes. With later entrants, this trend could be reversed. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? You know, if the market is immature or not very well established, effectuation is appropriate because you're learning about the market as you go. But once the market or industry is established, then you can analyze the market and causation processes can take over. I like she quotes Schumpeter in this. She says, you know, for, for markets, it was not enough to produce satisfactory soap. It was also necessary to induce people to wash. You know, that's effectuation. You're controlling the future. Now, the next proposition that she gives at the level of the firm, she says successful firms in their early stages are more likely to have focused on forming alliances and partnerships than on other types of competitive strategies, such as market research and competitive analysis, long-term planning and forecasting, and formal management practices in recruiting and training of employees. Well, that kind of makes sense, right? You know, you think about how a lot of entrepreneurs start out. They're calling their friends and family and asking for loans, for help, for customers, all sorts of kind of stuff like that, so that makes sense. Now, within the firm, at the level of founders and decision makers, we start off with conjecture one. In marketing decisions, in contrast to decision makers, um, effectuators are less likely to use traditional types of market research, such as surveys and test marketing. Instead, they just dive in and fly by the seat of their pants. We've talked about that. Conjecture two, in financial decisions, effectuators are less likely to use long-term planning. Instead, they're likely to focus on short-term gain because once again, Every time they learn something new, they change their plan. Conjecture three. In organizational decisions, in contrast to traditional decision makers, effectuators are likely to build strong participatory cultures rather than hierarchical procedures-based ones. In fact, in contrast to traditional decision makers, effectuators are less likely to be effective in running large organizations with well-oiled procedures. Again, you think about someone like Thomas Edison, a brilliant inventor. It was a great small-time operation, but once GE started getting really big, they basically banned Edison to his lab and kept him away from people. Or Steve Jobs, right? Brilliant guy, very much an effectuation kind of guy, but he still need to hire a bunch of corporate types to actually make Apple a successful company. That's what they're saying. So effectuators are probably really good for the small firms, but very few can actually build it up uh, successfully. Conjecture four. Effectuators are more likely to fail often, but are, let, are more likely to manage their failures more effectively and to create larger and more successful firms in the long run, although they may need help, um, may need to hire professional uh, managers. And that makes sense, right? So she leaves us with one final thought. And she says, as imaginative actors who, uh, I argue, as an effectuator, that is an imaginative actor who seizes contingent opportunities and exploits any and all means at hand to fill a plurality of current and future aspirations, many of which are shaped and created through the very process of economic decision making and are not given a priori. So this is for all my friends that are watching. What do you think? Are you a causation person or are you an effectuation person? Let me know why. Please post that in the comments. I'd be curious to get your feedback. And as always... Give me a thumbs up, that's a like, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next playlist.